Hello, and thank you for watching this Parents as Partners video. We will be exploring one of my favorite topics, string instrument physics. As teachers and parents, one of our main goals is to help our students to become independent learners and ultimately to be able to teach themselves. My name is Meredith Arksey, and I teach violin and viola at Washington State University in Pullman, Washington. I'm also a Suzuki teacher, but I am not a physicist. I became really interested in this topic and have researched it extensively, as well as doing a session on it at the Suzuki conference in Minneapolis, and now a shortened version for parents as partners. We will start with Helmholtz and his stick slip motion. What exactly is happening with the rosin and the string to make a sound, and what is happening to the string when the tone is bad? Helmholtz was a 19th century physicist and acoustician, and he used strobe lights to discover what happens when the rosin grips the string. For example, on a down bow, the friction of the rosin grabs the string and pulls it to the right, and then the string is released. When it's grabbing, that's called the stick phase, and when it's released, that's called the slip phase. You can go on YouTube and, and look up bowed violin string in slow motion and you'll be able to see this amazing wave, the grab and then how it waves and hits the nut and comes back to the bridge again. And it's so mind-boggling to me to think that a stick followed by a slip 440 times per second results in the A tone the pitch of the A string. It's almost as if a pizzicato is going so fast and that's what makes our beautiful tone is the stick followed by a slip. But what happens when the tone is bad? That's what we're going to discuss and that's what's useful to kids. So, if we were playing with our bow close to the fingerboard where the, the string is rather spongy, it's, it's very flexible, then we need to have a certain bow speed, bow weight, and number of hairs or tilt of the bow to make that good stick slip motion. So this is called, we call this the sports car lane. We're gonna go out to the sports car lane here, and I'm going to play with light bow, fast, just like a sports car, and tipped up to the side. and that allows the stick to be followed by a slip. But let's say that I was gonna play in the middle, which is where we usually play anyway. I'm going to call that the family car lane, somewhere over the, the circle on the F hole. And I'm going to be like a car. So instead of a fast, light sports car, I'm gonna be like a family car. A heavier weight and a slower speed than the sports car. So, but I'm gonna call it a medium speed and medium weight and also a medium tilt to the bow. And then, let's say we're driving in the truck lane, that's the close to the bridge lane. My bow has to act like a truck. Remember how I said this was spongy near the fingerboard? It's medium tough in the middle, but it's very, very hard next to the bridge. The string is very firm here. So my bow is going to have to match that. I'm going to do um, a truck bowing next to the bridge, so I'm gonna be slower. Trucks are supposed to drive slower than cars, even though we know they don't always. And heavier, and I'm also gonna have all 18 of my wheels down. So what happens when we have a bad tone? What happens is, is that a stick might be followed by another stick or a slip by another slip instead of stick, slip, stick, slip. Okay, let me do an example. Let me drive a truck, but I'm gonna swerve out into the sports car lane. So I'm heavy and I'm slow. This is gonna make too much friction, isn't it? Bad, very bad. Now, let's say I take a sports car and I drive it in the truck lane, so I'm gonna be light and fast. And I end up with 
uh, ponticello kind of sound because I don't have enough friction to get the whole string going. I call this a stick, stick, stick kind of tone because of driving too slowly and too heavily in a spongy lane out here in the sports car lane. Or this is a slip, slip, slip tone driving too fast and too light in a lane where the string is very hard. A good exercise is to have the students play in a certain lane. For example, you could say, play me a note in the sports car lane and make sure that your bow is fast and light and that it's tilted on its side. Or play a note in the car lane, the family car lane, and make sure that your bow is medium weight, medium speed, and medium tilt. Or play a note in the truck lane and make sure that you're driving a truck slow, heavy, and with all the wheels on. When discussing the stick slip motion, we also need to discuss the permitted range. The permitted range means the amount that the bow is permitted to swerve around without disrupting the stick followed by the slip or the stick slip motion. Closer to the bridge, the permitted range gets narrower and narrower. So when we're playing very close to the bridge in the truck lane, we have to be very, very exact about how far from the bridge we are, how much weight, how much speed, and how directly over the hair the stick is. So we have no wiggle room. It's as if we're driving on a very, very narrow mountain road on, and on either side are these huge cliffs going down. And we have to really keep our eyes focused on the exact piece of winding that we're playing on and maintain a constant speed and a constant weight. Any kind of swerve in this very narrow permitted range is going to result in a bad tone. For example, you can hear me as I swerve closer and farther from the bridge that the tone suffers. Now, the good news is though, that the permitted range out here in the family car and in the sports car area is quite large. That's why we start kids on playing in the middle lane because we don't want them to be having to deal with this very narrow permitted range dirt close to the bridge. So out here I can swerve a lot and I'm still going to retain my good stick slip motion. Watch as I swerve. I still have proper tone and I'm skating all over the place. I hope you enjoyed this video on how we can use Helmholtz's stick slip motion to improve our tone on stringed instruments. Please check back for more videos on string instrument physics if you're interested. Thank you.